Well, hi there, students. It's Mr. V, and today we're going to finally talk about something that many of you have been waiting for for quite some time. Color. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over what's called color theory. Color theory just means how to use color and how colors work with each other and why. And we're also going to go over a little bit of brain psychology with color. Colors actually trigger different parts of the brain. And so that means you would, you would choose certain colors uh, to generate a specific mood in your piece. There's a reason why some artists choose certain colors over others in their work. And so let's take a look at this piece. We've got a forest. It's green. It's kind of tranquil. It's kind of relaxing. However, if we look over here, here's another picture of a forest. The mood is completely different. And uh, let's just go back to the first one. Makes you feel a certain way. Go back to the other one. Makes you feel completely different. That's what color mood is. Mood is the use of a color to generate a specific sensation, feeling, or effect in your work. So subject matter is irrelevant when it comes to color. You could have two pictures of the same thing. And you've got one that's inviting and warm and sunny, and the other that is uh, frigid, kind of closed off, ominous, maybe a little scary, based solely on the colors. And so when we look at colors at the beginning of this video, I want you to break colors down into two major groups, warm and cool. And that means exactly what it sounds like. Colors generate warm sensations, and other colors generate cool sensations. Take a look at this piece. The yellows and the oranges and the reds all are used where the light source is at. But all the blues and the violets, and maybe even a little bit of green, is used where the negative space is at. That's warm and cool. And if you want to make a very good piece, you want to have a good balance between warms and cools in your work. There are always some of those opposites included within it. Look back at this one. This is a successful piece because it's got very, very cold colors as the majority, but it's balanced out with a few warms in there, the yellow flowers. And that happens in nature a lot. Wherever the light comes from, wherever the warmth comes from, colors correspond to that. Look at the sun. The sun generates whites, yellows, oranges, and reds. But likewise, in the negative spaces, we've got greens, violets, and blues. And this is a color wheel, and it's divided right down the middle between warm and cool. The warmest color is yellow. The coldest is violet. And if we drew a line right down the middle, everything on one side would be cool and the other side would be warm. So pure yellow is the warmest. Yellow green goes into the cold spectrum. Yellow orange goes into the warm spectrum. Now we're going to get a little more in depth in here with the color wheel and how it operates. Color is also used not just to create a mood, but to tell a story. Notice where the light source comes from. Notice where the warms, warm colors come from. Uh, who is the good guy based on the color palette? Look at the colors used for the guys with the guns, all cold colors and neutral browns. But over here on the other side, we've got the bright colors. We've got the warmest ones. We've got reds. We've got yellows. We've got whites. Look at this piece from the Middle Ages. This piece is filled with symbolism and because back then and also in our society today, colors mean different things. There's a reason why this guy on the left has a violet and brown robe. And there's a reason why the lady on the right has a green dress. Those colors represent things in that culture. Now colors do things, and those guys with an art background might already know this. I'm just going to approach it as if nobody's heard about it. Uh, you've got three major colors, and those are called primaries. Those are colors that cannot be broken down into other ones. Primary colors are yellow, blue, and red. Now when those colors mix together, they do stuff. Yellow, when it hits blue, turns green. Red and yellow make orange, and uh, red and blue make violet. Believe it or not, I've actually seen a lot of students not know how to mix their colors. Uh, if we look at the color wheel, if you need to know how to mix any color, simply do the following. If you want to know how to mix purple, look two colors to the right and the left. You have to only mix blue and red. That's it. If you want to learn how to mix orange, just look two colors to the right and the left. You mix red and you mix yellow. So we got three primary colors and they form a triangle on the color wheel. Uh, we also have what are called secondary colors. Those are green, purple, and orange. Those are colors that are made by mixing primaries. We also have what are called tertiary colors, uh, number three. And those are what I call in-betweens. Those are the colors that are in between blue and purple. That would be blue-purple. Uh, the color between red and orange, that would be red-orange or orange-red. really doesn't matter which one you put in the front of that word. Now, another form of color that we're going to go even deeper in in a future screencast is called a compliment. A compliment doesn't mean to say, hey, you're pretty or you're handsome. Compliment means it goes hand in hand with something else. And the secret to making realistic values and realistic shadows in a colored piece is to use the compliment. And a compliment is a color that's located directly on the opposite side of the color wheel. 
So the complement to red would be green. What happens when you mix those two together? You get brown. You get what's called a neutral tone, a muddy gray neutral brown. And that's how you create realistic shadows in your work. Here's an example of an abstract piece that I made in watercolor. I love color. You've maybe mainly seen me draw mostly in black and whites, but uh, color is a big one. And we use the same techniques in color that we use in uh, drawing. Uh, for example, uh, layering. The way I got all these different colors was simply by painting over it multiple times. Uh, and this is a great example of warms versus cools. You look at the left side, it gives you a certain sensation or emotion. You look at the right, vice versa, the same thing. Now it's been proven that colors actually trigger a response in the brain physiologically. Stick your head in a scanner, show a person the color red, and a specific area of the brain will start to fire. And uh, that's how color theory applies to color psychology. You will choose certain colors to generate an effect in your viewer. It's not about what color you like. If red calms you down, it may not calm the rest of the planet down. So you probably wouldn't want to make a relaxing, peaceful image using the color red. And that's used in marketing quite a bit. We'll go into some examples for that. So let's see what the colors actually mean. Well, yellow is the warmest color. It's the brightest. It also triggers areas of cheerfulness. Uh, happiness, excitability, energy in, in the part of your brain. If you look at yellow, if you have a lot of yellow in a room, it'll give you a headache. It'll also make babies cry. That's pretty interesting. Red triggers the area in your brain res that is responsible for animal emotion. Uh, for example, passions, hungers, uh, love. Uh, it does actually trigger some parts of that. Does it make you angry? Does it make you hungry? Not really but it triggers those parts of the brain. So if you're angry already, it just makes it a little bit more intense. And blue is the most passive of them. That's, the, that's a cold color. That, that is a color, interestingly, it's preferred by men mostly. Uh, it's for calmness. Um, it curbs appetite, which is pretty interesting. And uh, it's peaceful, it kind of chills you out. And also in your work, if you have some cools in there, uh, it makes your work less anxious uh, using based on your choice of color palette. Now, if we look at the secondaries, uh, all throughout history, um, certain colors have had certain symbols. For example, violet represents royalty, or wealth, or wisdom, or success. Uh, if we look at orange, that means excitement. There's a reason why most warning signs on the road are orange. That means like, you know, hazard lights or something like that. Orange is used for a warning. Green represents uh, tranquility. You know, it's kind of a peaceful color. It's been scientifically proven that rooms that have lots of green in them uh, can reduce stress levels in the brain. Neutral tones, like a brown, mean uh, kind of a practicality, uh, boredom. Uh, there's really not much going on color-wise in a brown color. So they're, that's why they're referred usually as neutral tones. And that's why most shadows have kind of a grayish brown look to them. Uh, that comes from when you mix complementary colors. Now this is pretty cool. Let's look at how colors are used in advertising to trigger those parts of your brain. If you look at McDonald's, what are the two major colors used? Red and yellow. Red is for hunger and passion. Yellow is for fun and excitement. Likewise, their food has lots of the color red for ketchup and yellow for you know cheese and so on. Yeah, but that's generally the case when it comes to psychology of color. So I hope you found this helpful. Be very familiar with this when we move into color. Uh, if you need to watch this video more than once in order to get it to stick, do so. Uh, you'll be graded by your use of color in your future works and why you chose that color for a mood for color psychology. And I look forward to seeing you. Take care.